So today we're taking a look at yet another AI program and this one in particular has become one of my favorite ones to use in recent times and the program that we're talking about today is the Topaz Video AI. Now this AI tool has been out for quite some time but I've been using it for about 5 to 6 months and it has been so handy to the point that it has essentially become a part of my own workflow. Now, this AI tool is designed to enhance the properties of your videos in every way, whether it be resolution, frame rate, stabilization, sharpness, all of those things can be enhanced using this single tool right here. And it's also quite relatively easy to use. All you have to do is just select up the file or clip that you want to work with. And at the right hand panel, you will see all of the options that the program offers. So at the top right is the presets window, you can, so you can select up some of the presets that the program has already made and you're good to go from that. Some of the options are 4x slow motion, 8x slow motion. So if you have a clip that was short, maybe uh, 25 frames or 30 frames, you can use these and essentially get an output clip that has a frame rate of let's say 120 fps or up to 240 fps other than that there is uh, auto cross stabilization upscaling you can use this to upscale your clip so if you have a low risk clip something like maybe 720p 1080p you can use this to upscale it to something like 4k 6k or even 8k yes you can upscale your clips to up to 8k using this program and it does a really good job at that you can actually see the difference between the 4k and the 8k even though I don't have an 8K display, you can, I can tell the difference between the detailed information when I compare the 8K clip with the 4K clip. So it's really good. I would highly recommend you to try that out. Now, underneath that is the output properties window. Here you can select up the output properties that you want the clip to have. So the first option is for resolution. You can select up uh, 720p, 1080p, F, Full HD, 4K, 8K, or you can go ahead and manually select up the frame width and height to get a custom resolution, maybe like 6K. And the other one is for frame rate, you can go ahead and select up the output frame rate that you would like, something like 50 FPS, 90 or even 120 FPS. Now, underneath that is the filter section. These are essentially the AI models that the program has and each AI model is designed for a specific kind of task. So the first one is stabilization and it's used for obviously stabilization. You have two options for the method wise. There's the full frame and the auto crop. Now the auto crop is essentially similar to the warp stabilization feature in Premiere Pro if you're familiar with that. Now the other one is full frame is what I believe warp stabilizer should have been. It and works essentially similarly. Uh, what it does, it uh, stabilizes your clips, it crops into it. But instead of giving you a cropped in clip with the edges showing around, what it does, it uses machine learning and goes back in and fill in those gaps and details to essentially give you a clip that has stabilization applied to it, but there is no crop factor at all. And it looks really, really good. It looks really natural. Now, the other one that I use a lot is the Enhancement AI tool. And this one is primarily used for upscaling and adding more sharpness, detail and all those kind of things. So what is the difference between upscaling and just scaling up your clip while you're in editing? So for example, if you're working with a 1080p clip in a 4K timeline, you'll have to scale up the clip to essentially fill in the frame size. And since there's not enough data, you're essentially expanding up the pixels to fill in the extra size resulting in less detail, less sharpness, and it overall doesn't look that great. Whereas with upscaling, it stretches out the clips and using machine learning, it goes back in, fill in those details and information and creates new pixels. Essentially gives you a clip that has more information than the original one, resulting in higher sharpness detail and it overall looks much better. Now, for the AI model for the enhancement one, there are a couple of options. So there's the Proteus one, which is used for fine tuning and adding more detail and all that. The Iris one is for enhancing facial features, skin features. The Artemis one is for denoising. This one is really good. So if you have a clip that has a lot of noise going around, you can use this one to essentially clean up the noise and it does a really good job at that. Now, now when it comes to parameters, there are two options. There's the Auto, which I use most of the time since it does a pretty good job. But other than that, you can also select it up to manual and set up the parameters yourself. So you have a compression ratio, recover detail, sharpenings, reducing noise, dehalo, which is essentially uh, the clarity effect. But what I would recommend you to do is go, go ahead and click on the estimate button, which will give you the parameters of what the program would set if it was set to auto. Now, after that you're done, you can change up anything that you like, change the sharpness, reducing noise, all those kind of things, and you're pretty much good to go. Now, another AI model that I use a lot besides the enhancement one is the frame interpolation one. Now, this one is used to essentially change the frame rate of your video clips. Now, I use this one a lot since I do a lot of product videography and there's a lot of slow motion stuff going around in that. 
And I use this one when I want to expand the uh, slow motion capabilities of my equipment. For the slow motion factor, there are a lot of options. There is 2x, 3x, 4x, and it's up to 16x, 16 times. But I've never used that much, but it's an option out there. You can use it if you like. Now, there are a couple of AI models. There's the Apollo and the Kronos, and those are designed for separate kind of situation for something like a clip that has a lot of motion and for something like that has less motion, you can mess around with that and find out which works best for you. So what it means by frame interpolation is that it takes up the clip, stretches it out and goes back in to fill in those gaps of frames using machine learning and create up new frames according to the information of the previous frame and the next frame and, and creates a new frame with detailed information accordingly. And it does a really good job. It looks really good. It looks natural. There's no artifacting. It almost no aliasing. It looks really, really good. I have used some other AI frame interpolation softwares beforehand, but this one does the job the best in my experience. So I would highly recommend this program for frame interpolation stuff if you would like to do that. Now, one other great feature that I want to talk about this program is the preview feature. So instead of exporting multiple trials of clip with different parameters applied to it, which can take a lot of time depending on the system that you have, you can go ahead and select up a part of the clip that you would like the uh, AI module to be applied on. So you can take the player head, go to a certain part of the clip that you would like to get a preview of, select the duration of the preview, let's say five seconds. I'm gonna go with 4K upscaling. I don't want frame interpolation. After that, I can just go ahead and click on the preview button and, and it will generate a preview of that section only, which you can see to check how the AI model or the parameters are working with that clip. Now, what's so great about this is while it's generating the preview, you can go ahead and select up a different parameter. So you can select up a different parameters and get a preview of that as well while it's still working on the first one. So you can stack up different uh, trials essentially and check out which parameter or module works best for your clip and what you, your needs. And after you're done and you like the one that you want to export, you can essentially just click on the preview one that you want, that you like the results of. You can go ahead and click on export as, and it will export that clip with the same parameters that was that the preview actually had. So you don't have to go ahead and save up different kinds of parameters. You can mess around with and see what you like. And after you're done and you like the one, you can just quickly export that one only. So that's a really good feature. Now, as I mentioned, I've been using this program for about five to six months now, and it has been so handy. It has essentially become a part of my workflow. I've used it in almost all of my projects as far as I can remember. It does a really good job, whether it be upscaling, interpolating, uh, ups since my camera can only do 1080p 60fps, I use this program a lot to upscale my clips to 4K, 6K, change the frame rate of my videos to something like 120 FPS. And I can't recommend this program enough. If I have to define this program in one word, it's just purely magic. And yeah, it does have a price tag of 250 bucks, but considering what this program can do, I believe it's well worth the price. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I would highly recommend you try it out and see how you can implement this program to enhance up your videos next. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next one.